Coming up next, Book TV presents Afterwards, an hour-long program where we invite guest hosts to interview authors. This week, award-winning historian Alan Brinkley discusses his new book, The Publisher, about Henry Luce, the founder of popular magazines Life, Time, and Fortune. The National Book Award winner reveals the creativity and insight of the man credited with reshaping the magazine industry, while also showing a side of the publishing magnate rarely chronicled. He discusses the biography with editor of the New York Times Book Review, Sam Tannenhaus. Welcome to Book TV's Afterwards. I'm Sam Tannenhaus, editor of the New York Times Book Review, and my guest today is Alan Brinkley, distinguished historian and author of a new biography of Henry Luce. Welcome, Alan. Thanks, Sam. Good to be Alan, here. Alan, you're one of the most distinguished political historians in America. Why did you choose to write a biography of a famous journalist? Well, it's a long story, and I won't, I won't tell you all of it. I, I was interested in writing a biography after I finished my last book, uh, which is on the New Deal. And uh, I was sort of groping around for uh, a subject. I didn't want to write about a president. I didn't. Uh, and I think partly because I'm uh, from a family of journalists, uh, the idea of writing about journalism appealed to me. Well, tell the audience and, a little bit about your family of journalists. Uh, well, my father, uh, David Brinkley, was a television newsman. My brother was a New York Times reporter for many years. My younger brother was a Scripps Howard reporter. Uh, my mother was a United Press uh, reporter for a while uh, in her youth. Uh, so I'm the only one who, who's never been in journalism. Um, and uh, that probably led me to it. Also, uh, I was sort of encouraged to do it by uh, a few people, including Arthur Schlesinger, uh, who thought... A great American historian. A wonderful historian, a great <laughs> friend. And um, he, uh, he thought Luce had never had a good biography. And um, that, so that helped me. And then I, I just decided to poke around in the archives for a little bit to see whether I wanted to do it. And the, the material was so rich. Uh, and so revealing uh, that it really made me excited about uh, writing his biography. And Alan, your book is called The Publisher, Henry Luce and His American Century. Explain that subtitle. Well, the American Century is a phrase that, that is best known because of an essay that Luce wrote in 1941. Uh, and that phrase has echoed through the decades since then. Uh, Making it his American century rather than the American century is sort of my, I guess, fairly subtle way of suggesting that the American century that Luce envisioned didn't actually happen, uh, that it was a vision, but not a reality. Uh, and what was that vision? That vision was a vision of the United States as the great model in the, uh, to the world of what the future would be. Uh, and that the future after World War II would be America uh, spreading the, the, the good news of America around the world uh, and reshaping the world as a result. Uh, and of course, as we see now, uh, that effort, uh, among other things, uh, created a lot of ill will around the world um, and has uh, produced some of the, the problems that we're living with today. Alan, this suggests there was a missionary or crusading impulse to Henry Lewis. Tell us about his background. Well, there absolutely was a missionary quality to uh, Lewis, and it, for good reason. His uh, father was a Presbyterian missionary in China. Uh, Lewis was born there. He grew up there. Uh, he was immersed in the missionary life. Uh, and in China, where there were very few uh, conversions to Christianity, uh, the missionaries uh, sort of gave up on um, evangelizing and uh, recruiting uh, new, new Christians and turned themselves into people who were trying to modernize China and to educate uh, and to create a, uh, a sort of modern world uh, in China. That was certainly what his father uh, believed in and Luce believed in it too. Now, Luce was educated or received much of his education 
in very elite institutions in America. This is one of the themes of your book. He was born, I believe, in 1898. And when did he come to America to study, and where did he study? He left, well, he, he went to boarding school in China, British boarding school, which he hated, uh, but which, which was a very rigorous, even if, if almost cruel, uh, school that prepared him very well. Uh, and he left uh, China at the age of 13 uh, and um, traveled to Europe, spent a year in Europe, uh, part of it at a school in England and part of it traveling, uh, and then went to Hotchkiss at the age of uh, 14. Uh, and that's a and, uh, private school in Connecticut. In is that Connecticut, right? Lakeville, Connecticut. Uh, actually, 15, I guess, he, was, he began Hotchkiss. Um, he was a scholarship student, which uh, was a kind of demeaning position within the school, but he paid no attention uh, to the assumption that scholarship students were somehow inferior. And he, in fact, they didn't even live in the same housing. Not at the beginning, no. He had to live uh, in, a, in a house way, way away from the campus and take a, take a truck in every morning. Um, but he, uh, he treated Kotchkis as if he were one of the elite and uh, ultimately, of course, became one. What kind of student was he? He was a very good student. He was a brilliant student, in fact. Uh, always number one or number two in his class. That was true in, in uh, China as well. Uh, he, he was a, a, if he had chosen to be an academic, he would have been a brilliant academic. Uh, I was surprised to learn from your book how adept he was at foreign languages. Especially ancient Greek, he won the uh, the Yale Prize uh, for uh, the best uh, Greek scholar in his freshman year uh, because of the uh, because of how well he had learned Greek in uh, at Hotchkiss. Now Hotchkiss was kind of a breeding ground or grooming school for Yale students. Is that right? Almost everyone went to Yale. And, and he arrived there in at the age of 17 or 18. What was Yale like then? Well, Yale then was just beginning to become a modern liberal arts uh, university. Uh, like most universities in the 19th century, uh, Yale had been primarily a, a university that taught people the classics and, uh, and a few other things. Uh, but what hadn't changed was the, the culture of Yale in which the faculty and the curriculum were sort of secondary to the student activities. Uh, and people measured themselves by how successful they were in sports or in the Yale Daily News or uh, maybe most of all getting into, this, into the, uh, uh, the clubs, into the, the Skull and Bones and the other uh, secret societies. Uh, and so loose had a very good academic record at Yale, but that's not what he really talked about when he was writing or uh, letters to his parents or uh, talking to his friends. Everything was about uh, making the, the, the Yale Daily News, uh, being the president of the Yale Daily News, which he didn't, which he failed to do. Uh, and uh, in the end, most of all, being elected to Skull and Bones, which, he, which, which did happen for him. Uh, Alan, um, the first part of your book is almost a dual biography. It describes Luce's friendship and competition with a very brilliant contemporary, Britton Haddon, who was very different from him. Yet they formed a historic collaboration and partnership. How did that happen? There would never have been a Time, Inc. Uh, if there had not been Britton Hatton. Maybe there wouldn't have been one without Luce, too. The two of them uh, met in their first year, in, or in Harry's first year, at Hotchkiss. Uh, Hatton had been there one year before. And they became friends. They had shared interests. They both wanted to, to be writers. They both wanted to be, uh, wanted to work in, on the newspaper. Uh, when they went to Yale, uh, they remained very close friends, partners, collaborators, rivals. Uh, they, uh, they competed with each other on everything, uh, healing the, the Yale Daily News, uh, and then some years later, competing to be president of the Yale Daily News, uh, which hadn't won uh, to his great disappointment. 